Hello to all of our Carnival family, all of our fantastic team members who are at home waiting to rejoin our ships once we can resume operating. Thanks for joining me today. I know you have lots of questions about what's happening and what will happen in the future. While there is still a lot of uncertainty, hopefully I can shed some light by sharing with you what we do know and to give you an update on all things related to Carnival Cruise Line. So let's get started. As you know, four of our fantasy class ships have left the fleet. We have now been able to finalize dry dock schedules for several ships which were postponed. So we are going to be delaying the return of Carnival Magic, Carnival Valor, Carnival Paradise, and Carnival Spirit until after their refurbishments are completed, which will be in the first half of 2021. We understand the impact that these changes continue to have, and we appreciate your support and understanding. Meanwhile, we are busy getting ready for Mardi Gras, which will be arriving at the end of the year with plans for her first sailing out of Port Canaveral in February. I can assure you she is going to be a fabulous new ship. Her sister ship, Carnival Celebration, opens up for sale in October, and she'll be based in Miami and arrive in 2022 in time for Carnival Cruise Line's 50th birthday. You may have seen we planned a number of Carnival celebrations to celebrate. We've continued to seek guidance from 12 U.S.-based renowned public health experts and scientists, along with health experts in Europe who were consulted as part of the resumption of cruising for our Costa and Aida brands. CLIA has also harnessed many industry and external resources to develop the industry plan that was recently announced. And we have a number of senior executives in our company that bring significant medical and public health experience that we are working to build effective and comprehensive protocols and procedures that we'll be sharing with guests, our trade partners, and other stakeholders over the coming weeks. Destinations are our partners. We cannot sail or operate without them. So we are in this together, and we've been keeping in close contact with all of our destination partners in the following areas. First of all, we've been making direct calls and outreach from all of our executives to heads of state, various persons in government, and our private sector partners. Keeping in touch not only keeps us connected, but helps us understand how they are facing this challenge and what we all need to consider as we prepare for the day that we can return to cruise. We are part of the FCCA's America's Cruise Tourism Task Force that's working closely with destination partners focused on safe operations to return to cruise. Specific destinations have been supporting us through this pause, in particular Barbados, the Bahamas, St. Martin, Mexico, Panama, and Curacao, along with others. Some of these countries were extremely critical in the process for us to help get our crew members repatriated and back home. Barbados, in particular, moved over 20,000 crew for the cruise industry. CLIA's guidelines are serving as the foundation for the cruise industry's return to service. As we seek direction from CDC and other regulatory bodies. As you've likely seen for phase one, these include 100% testing of all guests and crew members. There are policies with regards to wearing masks by all guests and team members in designated venues, particularly when indoors and during shore excursions. 
enhanced medical staffing, medical facilities, equipment, onboard testing capabilities, along with dedicated quarantine and isolation cabins would be implemented. We'll also be operating with reduced guest capacity on the ships, along with other measures to ensure that we are allowing for physical distancing while on the ship. Shore excursions will be limited to only those who can uphold our protocols and guests will be denied boarding if they fail to abide by shore excursion protocols. Now, these are just some of the high level examples that will be supported by very detailed and specific operating procedures. Enhancements are already underway to add new features and functions to our extremely popular Carnival Hub app. We are initially expanding the pre-cruise online check-in process with a new health questionnaire and related time-saving steps for our guests before they arrive in the terminal. Once on board, guests will use the Hub app for accessing safety content, digital food and drink menus, and the ability to pre-order food before arrival to a restaurant or to be able to order food items that can be delivered, like we've already done with pizza be being delivered anywhere the guest is on the ship. There will also be touchless payment capabilities, contact tracing tools, and new messaging capabilities to eliminate much of the paper notices that can clutter the stateroom. We're also working on the ability to book venue reservations for our shows and events on board, virtual queuing for select locations like guest services, and lots of other self-service functions that will allow guests to move seamlessly across the ship. Ultimately, your smartphone will be an important thing for you to carry and use so that you have access to the Hub app and all the information and messaging that we want to be able to communicate to our guests on board. Well, I wish I had a crystal ball, but I don't. All I can say is that we are working very hard with great urgency with government and public health officials so that we can resume cruising as soon as the time is right. The increasing availability of testing with faster results and greater accessibility are all critical in order for us to be able to operate at scale. And of course, indications that a vaccine is on the way before the end of the calendar year are quite positive. We've also learned a lot more about how COVID is transmitted and how it can be mitigated, which allows us to build effective protocols and procedures. Now, when we do begin cruising, it will be with a gradual phased in approach. We'll be staggering the fleet's re-entry to optimize demand and operating performance over time. So remember, even after the no-sale order is lifted and even after we begin cruising, it will take time for a full recovery back to our 2019 levels. Like many other companies during this unprecedented time with our extended pause and the reduction of four ships from our fleet, we have had to take actions to eliminate certain positions. Keeping in mind this translated to a very small population of layoffs for our shipboard team, but nonetheless, those are always very, very difficult. We've already begun to recall some of the furloughed positions to begin working on the rollout and delivery of Mardi Gras and Carnival Radiance in 2021, along with the dry docks that we have planned. Nonetheless, attrition is not new to our industry, as many crew have historically elected to stay home rather than come back each and every year. So we actually anticipate the need to recruit when we eventually resume back to full operations. But as I said earlier, that will take time. 
We believe that with the difficult decisions we've made thus far regarding employee separations and furloughs, we have sufficiently equipped the company to maintain stability during this extended pause. We are working in earnest to finalize both guest and crew protocols for when we are able to return to operating. We are working actively with our manning agencies and are engaging with the local governments from where our crew members live to ensure that we understand any specific restrictions, procedures, or requirements that may still be in place in certain parts of the world. Our first priority is the health and safety of our guests, our crew, and the places we visit. We know that we'll be starting up with fewer ships and it will take time to ramp up back to the full fleet. We also know that we will have to limit the number of guests that we are able to bring on board at the beginning. And we know that testing will be required for both guests and crew. We also know that masks are an important part of how we keep people safe, especially when they are indoors and in more confined spaces. We will be dedicating additional resources in our medical facilities with isolation and quarantine sections dedicated. We want you to come back as soon as possible, but at the same time, you have to feel safe. As we get closer to our return, we will be sharing many more details. But just like we took good care of our team during the repatriation process to get you home, we have that same level of commitment to make sure we take care of each and every one of you as you return back to our ships and to cruising again with guests which I know for all of us can't happen soon enough, but we have to continue to be patient and make sure that we do this when we are ready and prepared.